Um, thank you all for coming to this uh, session for uncovering advanced paid search strategies. Uh, my name is Alan Hammack, and I am with LookSmart. Uh, before I get started, uh, just to let you know, we're going to run about 15 minutes of me yab, 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 yab. But I want to encourage uh, any of you, if you want to ask a question, you want to stop, interrupt, and you want to dive deeper into something, come up to the microphone and stop us, and let's just have a chat. Um, because I'm here to try to share some useful information with you. Uh, and, uh, and less of a capacity of, of promoting myself for my company, but I want to try to do my best to give you some useful information to go back out in the world with. Um, also, I want to remind you uh, from the Affiliate Summit uh, that uh, we ask you all please to fill out a, uh, the survey form that you have um, uh, before you leave. It just takes a couple of minutes, uh, circle the numbers and make a few comments and leave it with the person at the back before we leave. They would really appreciate if you did that. And then also, that we are recording this session. So we've got some video uh, and audio, and I think this is going to be made available on, uh, uh, on DVD, or it's going to be posted online or something like that. So you can come back and, and see it some more. So we're going to be talking about um, page search strategies. And I actually have a couple of different tacks that I can take uh, with this uh, presentation, depending on what it is that you guys really want to know or really need to know. So I thought I would ask you by a show of hands just to kind of get a sense of what the composition of you guys in the audience really is. First of all, uh, how many of you are actually operating an affiliate program yourself? You've got a website and you're monetizing that through a CPA network or through direct representation on a shopping engine or something like that. How many of you are, are doing that today? Okay. And then among you, how many of you are uh, driving traffic to your websites um, through um, uh, some sort of uh, search optimization program. Not a paid program unless you're going through an agency or something, but how many of you are working on your SEO, working on your link building and all that kind of stuff? Okay. Um, and then my last question is, is uh, how many of you are using paid search today, whether it's you're placing ads on Google or you might be experimenting with some of the second tier networks? Okay. Okay, good. Well, so uh, the, really the couple of different directions that I can take uh, with this. The one that I've got on the screen here uh, is to really talk about, well, what is a second tier search network? What is a search ad network? How is that different from Google, which I'll refer to as a pr proprietary search engine or just simply a search engine? How are search networks different from search engines? And then what do you need to know if you're going to go out there and talk to these networks uh, and engage them and get them to convince you that, that, uh, that your time is well spent? advertising on their network and that it's going to pay off for your program. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today is how do you evaluate the search networks? What questions should you be asking? What should you be looking for? Um, if we have any data junkies in the crowd, people that really like to get their hands dirty with spreadsheets, and uh, if you're like me, my morning starts off with 500,000 rows uh, that I chunk into a spreadsheet and I do 20 different graphs and I start to look at all my data and see what's what's going on today, what's different yesterday, what bubbles have just appeared on my graph. If you're a data junkie, we might switch midway uh, and talk about a specific strategy that you can use with the search ad networks that might be different than, um, than what you're used to doing if you're already running some paid programs on Google. So if you're used to running paid programs on, uh, on the major search engines, Google, Yahoo, you're probably doing a lot of keyword optimization, maybe using some bid management tools to manipulate your keyword prices, probably spending a lot of time optimizing your landing pages. On the search networks, uh, I have a different strategy altogether um, for that, and I can explain why it's necessary to have a different strategy and, and what that strategy is. But we'll get into that in a couple of slides. And if anyone's falling and, and their head's hitting the table, I will shift gears a little bit and put some graphs on the screen, and we'll talk search strategies and, and, and see if that gets the blood flowing a little bit. So uh, just uh, briefly, the, the one slide of uh, who am I and, and uh, what company am I with. I'm with a company called LookSmart. Uh, we've been in business a long time. So uh, at one point, LookSmart was a search engine back uh, in the early days when there were InfoSeeks and Alta Vistas and Netscape was just adding graphics to their browser. Uh, but uh, LookSmart has evolved over the years. It uh, went public uh, in 1999. We operated the Microsoft uh, uh, um, search site for, for a couple of years uh, up until the point that Microsoft decided that it was time that uh, Google might eat its lunch and that it should 
get into the business itself and do things itself. So LookSmart's been operating a search ad network, a syndicated ad network for a number of years now. And I've been with the company for about seven of those years, since about 2004. Um, we're based in San Francisco, we're traded publicly on the NASDAQ, and uh, we're a relatively small company, about 70 people. Uh, we have uh, three or four people here in New York, uh, and I'm actually actively involved in setting up a small office in the UK as well. So uh, we're kind of spread out in that way. So um, before I get into some of the uh, later slides here, I kind of want to talk about what specifically is a search ad network. Why is it different from a search site? So when I'm talking about a search site, you know, largely we're talking about Google, we're talking about Yahoo. Um, uh, we may be talking about some of the search engines. I'll, I'll refer to them uh, more generically as proprietary search engines. And the reason I use that word proprietary is it because they own the page where you're placing your ads. They control the pages where you place your ads, okay? And that makes a big difference when it comes to how it is you're evaluating the performance, the money that you're spending on these search engines and search ad network, whether or not the, the proprietor of that um, search network controls the page makes a big difference because it's implied that you then control your placement on that page. And that's what your strategy is all based around, right? Maybe, you're, maybe you've got a bid management program you're using right now uh, where you're trying to get uh, that second position on the page. The first position's too expensive and you're really trying to get that second. Or maybe you're trying to get on page two of the results. Maybe you've honed things down to very specific keywords. This is all based on the um, inherent assumption that the page that you're advertising on always looks exactly the same to the end user. So you know exactly where your ad's going to be, what it's going to look like, and you sort of put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and imagine how they're going to interact with that page and why they might click on your ad and might, how that might get them to your affiliate site. But on the search networks, which I'll call non-proprietary because they do not own the page, they do not control the pages where your ads are. They may have some influence over the page design, but largely they're not in control at all. Uh, it's a very different kind of thing. These, these uh, syndicated ad networks, the second tier search engines like Sm Look Smart, what we're doing is we're taking the ad copy that you provide, the keywords that you're targeting, and your bid prices, and we're pushing it out to uh, millions of other websites, all of which have a unique design, most of these websites will not look like each other. They will not have a similar placement of the, where the ads go on the page. Some of them will have them scrolling or across the top. Some of them will have them sliding down the side. So there's a lot of variability in terms of where your ad is shown and the order that it's shown, and even um, where the ads are coming from, who you're competing with on that page. Because search ad networks being non-proprietary, they're also non-exclusive, meaning when, when LookSmart is working with a publisher or Ask is working with a publisher, 7Search, Ad Knowledge, these are all search ad networks. When they're working with a publisher, the publisher has the choice. Every time they draw that page, they have a choice of it, which ads from which networks they're going to show. Uh, and a lot of times those publishers make that choice on the fly every single time. So there's a lot of variability. Um, uh, it's syndicated, it's not owned and operated. Uh, which makes the composition of the websites where your ads could appear uh, very, very diverse, okay? So keep in mind, if you're looking at your Google strategy, you're looking at your Yahoo strategy, you think, I know where my ad is, I know what it's doing. On a search ad network, what you know is you know what your ad copy is, you know which keyword you targeted, and you know the price you paid, but beyond those things, you might only know a handful of other variables. And, but knowing exactly how your ad is appearing on the site uh, is not one of those variables. And it, it, this uh, then uh, cascades down into, well, what do you need to know about the search network in order to do business with them? What do you need to know about your strategy? What assumptions do you have to throw out the door about your Google strategy in order to work with the, with the search ad networks? So the types of traffic that we're, we're um, seeing, I'll go back just real quickly, um, in the search ad networks can be roughly categorized into two categories. Intentional, which includes your search boxes. So those may, may be the publisher's search box with the publisher's own search results, like you might find on a, on a news site, for example. It could be toolbars, 
There are umpteen million toolbars out there. Every search ad network, every search engine has a toolbar that will plug into Firefox or Internet Explorer. All of those things qualify as intentional search traffic, people typing in keywords to boxes, even things kind of on the edge like domain navigation. So this would be, for example, where the end user either doesn't know or doesn't care about the difference between the URL box and the search box in their browser. They just type in search terms, whichever boxes happens to be handy, and then depending on their ISP, that ISP may convert the, what they typed into a search and display search results. Uh, and that would be uh, something that you'd call domain navigation or direct navigation sometimes it's called. Um, then you have the contextual um, networks where this is, um, some would call it pseudo search. It, there is a level of intent, but it's not the same level of intensity as a search box because what's happening here, you may have a content page where words on that page have been highlighted uh, and if the user clicks on the words on those pages or hovers over the words on those pages, then the, re the paid results are going to pop up in a, in a hover window or something like that. So this is what we call kind of contextual, and that can come in the form of blog sites, social media sites, emails, and a variety of different things. So it still qualifies, it's keyword driven, there's a level of user intent there because they are taking some action in order to cause the ads to show, but it's not quite the same level of intensity as what you get with the search box. And all of the search networks are made up of a, of a high level of diversity of this type of traffic, okay? So, um, how much of this traffic does this really add up to? So how much of an opportunity here? This is an important question for you to ask because your time is as equal uh, a value to you as your money, okay? So obviously uh, the proprietary search engines have the, the, the vast majority of the market. And this slide is, is a little bit dated. Uh, there's uh, probably a little bit more of a skew now towards uh, towards Google and Yahoo and the Microsoft uh, partnership. But still we're talking about 20% of the available search traffic out there is uh, going out to these non-proprietary search sites. So these could be um, blog sites, these could be meta search engines like Dogpile, they could be search networks like LookSmart. And within that 20%, there's a huge amount of diversity. So LookSmart, I think I would qualify as one of the larger ones, Ad Knowledge. Uh, some of the better known ones are um, like uh, ASL, Ask Sponsored Listings, is a network outside of Ask.com. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of players in that 20%. Um, and the reason that's significant to you is that your time is equal to your money. It's like, well, where am I going to invest my time? Uh, because I don't have an unlimited number of hours in the day. My Google program's already taking me uh, uh, more time than I care to, to commit to it. How is it that I'm going to go to these other ad networks and spend any time whatsoever? How's that going to happen? Well. Where this really uh, comes into play is, is where does this really fit into your overall, overall media strategy? I suspect that um, uh, uh, many of you spend a lot of time on, the, on your organic placement on search engines because it's something that you can invest your time, you can invest your sweat equity uh, into that um, and you get back out of that what you put into it. Um, and the risk is all about your own ingenuity and the amount of effort that you put into it. But when you start getting into the paid um, options, like placing banner ads on other websites or placing pay-per-click ads on search networks, um, the risk is significantly higher because not only are you investing your time, um, but you're also now investing your money and there's no guarantee that that money is going to come back to you in the form. Um, so, you know, when you look at search networks, search programs in general versus display, uh, it's, it's a lot more expensive. Um, the, ba the bar is set much, much higher for search uh, than for on display networks where you can buy a lot of inventory at a lower cost. Um, but you can also get a lot more out of a search program if you uh, uh, know how to um, maximize that. And uh, the point of my uh, presentation is largely going to be about how do you get these search ad networks to help you achieve your goals. So uh, I've talked a little bit about already about where the traffic is going to come from um, and a little bit about ben um, expanding onto the search ad networks. So I'm actually going to switch my slides here to my other slideshow and talk a little bit about a specific strategy because um, I want to kind of give you something concrete here before we go into the question and answer session, which will start here in just a couple of seconds. So 
So I've been talking about what the difference between a search engine is and a search network. Uh, and these are the, really the key differences I've been really hitting on is uh, the differences in terms of the, the nature of the media uh, and the variability involved. So if search ad networks are very, very different from search sites, then how is it exactly that you're going to go and, and achieve any kind of level of performance on that? Um, the way that the, the strategy that uh, that I promote is a mining strategy. So if you're if you're used to optimizing landing pages, optimizing bid prices, constantly scouring for uh, minute little keywords where you think you can park your ad where no one else has found that keyword yet, uh, that's that's your Google strategy. Um, but when you're looking at a search ad network, the problem is the diversity of that traffic is too many variables. You are out there in infinite space time trying to figure out how to survive in, 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 a, in a lot of calamity. You are going to need help and you're going to need to go to the search networks who will help you and they're, you're going to need to go to the networks that know their network really well uh, and can provide you with a level of service and, and a level of tools to do that. So, because these networks are so highly layered, there are distribution partners and there are networks and they're working with the other networks. You have to have a way of peeling back all the layers because Google's a nice, simple, a little simple thing. I keep using Google, but I, you know, ask.com, Yahoo, these are well-known quantities that you can wrap your head around. Whereas you start advertising a search network and you start looking at the sites that you're getting traffic from, and you can't make any sense of that whatsoever if you're just kind of scrolling through the data. So you need a way of peeling back these layers and you need a way of being able to say, well, how do I isolate the stuff that really works uh, and spend uh, and get my money out of the stuff that's not working? And the, the strategy that, uh, that we use is called the mining strategy. It's, it's, it's actually quite basic. It relies on the fact that the network needs to provide a level of service to you. Uh, that service can come in the form of tools, can come in the form of customer service, at LookSmart, it comes in the form of we actually assign you account managers and do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. But it starts with identifying core traffic. Where is the segment of the network that you can start out at where you have a level of comfort and a level of performance that's interesting to you and meaningful to you? Because your first litmus test of working with a search ad network is if I put an hour of my time into that search network, what am I getting back for that hour? Because if I don't get enough back out of that hour, I might as well just go and put that same hour into optimizing my link strategy and optimizing my landing pages. I might as well recommit that time back. So you've got to be able to work with a network that has a reputation, that has a level of service that can identify some core traffic. And usually that's going to be small because they have a very diverse network, but it's going to be interesting enough to get you started. And then the next step is, you engage in the mining strategy, and that is where the network then says, okay, now we understand the performance that your core is. We understand what you need, what works for you on this segment of the network. Now what we're gonna go out there and do is try to replicate that on the rest of the network through this mining strategy. So your core traffic is the traffic that's performing at expectations, and that's really the hook. That's really your first step. If you work with the search network, how do we get to that first step? How do we get to the interesting level where it says, okay, I know it works at this scale, now let's scale it up so that it's really meaningful to my business. And then the mining traffic is really the combination of tools, the data, the level of services that's provided in order to go and replicate that traffic across the rest of the network. And then I use the term debris uh, to describe the stuff that falls off to the side. Uh, and so the mining uh, strategy is actually quite simple in concept. It's just you start with a core, you find out what's working, and then you're trying to replicate this across the network. The, the trick here is that, okay, so that sounds very good, so how does this really work? We've got two minutes left. I'm gonna wrap up my comments here, and then we'll have some questions, uh, and we've gotta wrap up in about two minutes. But how does that really work? Well, the key is, is, is being able to engage the service, the search network, in order to get that to happen because they need to be able to give you a level of confidence that says, we'll work with you, we're gonna put you in this protective bubble, you're not gonna blow out your entire search budget in the first day uh, and find out that this whole thing has not really worked for you. You engage them at that level, let them prove to you that they've got the core traffic and then engage them to get them going on the mining traffic. So I'm sorry, I've uh, sort of run out of time. I'm, 
kind of a yappy person. I will go on forever. Um, do we have any questions in the audience? Um, maybe specifically, like what I, I'm trying to think myself, if I were sitting in your shoes and I'm going to go back out there and, and start looking at some of the vendors, what are some of the questions that I would be looking for? Um, a few of the places I would start is I would start finding out what are, what are the billing policies that the search ad networks have? Because in this, the early stage of working with the ad network, your biggest concern is, am I blowing my money? Is my money just going into the fire and being burnt up? So when you're working with the search ad network, one of the first things I would do is ask them what about their billing, uh, what's their refund policy, what's their dispute resolution policy. If it's not working for you, what are they doing to make that good? Uh, what is their definition of good and bad? Some of the search networks will say, these are the filters that we apply. But dig into that, go deeper than that, and say, okay, so let's assume that you've, you've said that this traffic is working or this traffic isn't working. What are we going to do about that? What are you going to do to make me whole? Because I can't waste all of my time tracing down invalid traffic or chasing down traffic that doesn't work. I, I just don't have that many hours in the day. I've got to put my, my time where it can make me money. That's really one of the first places I would start in engaging a search network. Any questions? We got one back there. Okay. So the question was, what what kind of answers do you want to hear to that question, right? So um, so first of all, you want to have a real clear um, and well-defined policy on what it is that the search network considers to be bad traffic. Get them to really spell it out for you because you're going to have the search networks accounting for the traffic and they say this is what we delivered, this is what was good, and this is what we di uh, didn't charge you for. You are going to have your own accounting of that same thing. You're going to be having the, the, the views on your page to your affiliate program, you're going to have your own. What is it that the ad network is going to do to walk you through the dispute resolution process? And how easy is that? Because if you have to spend a lot of time on that, if there's a long bureaucratic process, or if you don't feel like the search network has, uh, is, um, has a level of integrity or honesty about what they're trying to do for you, uh, then I, I, would be, I would question that. You know, can you work with a sales rep or an account manager and do you feel like you can trust them and that they're working on your behalf? So when you're, I would talk to someone who would be your account manager. That they'll be here at the show or they'll be at ad tech, SES. That person will be at the booth. Talk to them and, and just find out what it is that they do to go above and beyond to make it right for you. Because in the early stages, it takes, you have to earn the trust. They're working to try to find this course traffic for you and it's, um, the early stages, there's some trial and error involved in that. Okay? So they're going to need to earn your trust and, and they need to get a level of flexibility from you as well in figuring that out. you jumpstart a um, search program on an ad network uh, with the search network with your existing Google campaigns. That's the basic, yeah. So uh, the answer is yes. So um, because the strategy shift is towards uh, replicating a lockdown program, what you end up doing is you take a mature program that you're running in Google where you have figured out a lot of your ad copy and your landing pages and whatnot. You kind of want to lock that down when you get over to the search network because you're not going to be able to test tiny little variations on that search network. Do your variation testing over on Google. When you get to the search network, you want to lock that down. Just hand over the ad copy, hand over the keywords. Be open-minded if the network says, We've got a list of related keywords. They may not sound that relevant to you, but this will really help us find that core traffic. Be open to that. Make sure you understand uh, exactly how much risk they're taking with your money before you give them the blank check. Um, but yes, absolutely, you start with that. In fact, that's the, the fastest way to get started is take a mature program to a search network um, and look for the tools that the network has to convert those directly over. And also look for the tools that, that they have to support whatever tracking mechanism you're using so that you can see your A versus your B. But just keep in mind that whatever strategy you're using to optimize over in Google, don't try to copy that over to the search network. 
just let the search network optimize against the traffic with, the, with something that's locked down. Okay, so I think we're, we're out of time. I actually can uh, um, step off to the side if anyone's interested in a few more questions um, before I have to leave. But I have to turn the podium over to the next, uh, next group. So, okay. Thank you all. Appreciate it.